Hello everybody, Neil Walls from Brave You Academy here. I'm the health and well-being worker and I support people with anxiety and mental health. This little video is to try and give you a little bit of information on the stress response that is in our heads. That stress response is commonly nicknamed fight or flight. Fight or flight is a very clever mechanism in our minds that will serve you well in the right situations but also not do you justice in other situations. What do I mean by that? I'm going to use the film Inside Out to try and get get you a bit of a visual representation of that. So in the film Inside Out you've got all these little characters inside the main, char uh, the main character, the girl's head. She is often at the mercy of whatever these little characters are doing. And these little characters represent her emotions. Anger, fear, happiness, excitement, joy, sadness, all the different things. There's lots of them. Um, in the film, we only see a small portion of them. They've got a little mixing console. Now, this is where you need to lose, use your imagination. There's a little red button on that mixing console. And quite often, as you see in the film, Anger is always trying to get at the console to hit the button because he is in a bit of a, a panicked state and his only way to deal with things is anger. So if he's angry, he can fix the thing by just going on autopilot by hitting that button. That is the same for us. We have that little button inside of us and that's like a panic button. Once it's pressed, it's all systems go, systems red. Depending on you as a person though, depends on which way you are going to respond. So for some people, stressful event happens, stressful thing happens, something that scares you, something that makes you feel like you're under threat, you panic, button gets pressed, big beep, and then you are automatically in fight zone. That fight zone pretty much self-explanatory. So for some people, they get really angry, they get shouty, they suddenly get argumentative, they get really defensive, they might even throw some punches, they might storm away, they might kick something, they might punch a table, they might do all these different types of things. But that's fight, it's your Incredible Hulk moment. Uh, for anyone who's seen the Avengers, it's whenever he is under threat, he turns into Incredible Hulk and trashes the place down. He's not in control. That is kind of like our fight moment. And we're not in control of that. We're almost on autopilot. That's that's the problem with fight side of the fight or flight. The flight part of you, and you could do both. You can always do both, but you normally favour one over the other. But the flight part of you is, if it's slightly different, it's like the old cartoons that I'm assuming none of you have seen of Coyote in the Roadrunner. Just gets away. The Roadrunner was always trying to escape from Coyote. The Coyote was always trying to get him. That's the same in our heads. Exactly the same. So when stressful event happens, panicky moment happens, under threat, fear, big button gets pressed, beep, the flight mechanism kicks in and the first thing you want to do is get out of there. You want to get out of there. You want to get away from that stressful moment. You want to get away from that thing that has set you off, the thing that has set off your button. That is what the flight mechanism is. And for some people, that flight mechanism looks like they will actually get up and run. They will leave. Um, sometimes they might leave quietly and calmly, depending on them as a person, how much experience they've got with their own emotions. For others, it might be they might get themselves in a bit of a state. They might get upset. They might get really fearful. For others... You might suddenly find your breathing increases to the point that you're, I can't breathe, I'm palpitating, oh my god, I can't get a breath, what's going on? The other thing that some people might feel is their heart might be beating, might be going so fast, might be so hardcore that they feel like they're having a heart attack. They might feel that their blood is rushing so fast, they might feel their body temperature increasing, they might feel their stomach getting really upset, all those different things. But the primary focus is to get away, that is flight. So, if you think about it, both mechanisms are designed to protect us. Big scary thing, get away. If you're not there, big scary thing can't harm you. Simple. Fight response. Big scary thing, I'm going to take it on. If 
if I take it on, it can't harm me. That is the really simple version of understanding fight or flight. Where it gets complicated, though, is we live in a world today where big, scary things don't really happen to us day to day anymore. So sometimes stressful things such as homework, work, bills, cooking the tea, looking after the little brother or sister, putting up with someone's hurtful comments, friends having a joke and you maybe not in the right mood to take it, all those things, our brains perceive them still as threats if we're not in the right frame of mind. So not being in the right frame of mind that day, i.e. woke up on the wrong side of the bed, just in a bit of a bad mood, just having a bit of a grumpy day or a bit of a low day, which is okay, everybody has up and down days, everybody has low days. Um, that's when sometimes you might be at the mercy of this fight or flight. Hey Neil, check the haircut. What's up with that? What you say to me? The button has been pressed. And depending on what happens, you will always freeze first. And that freeze doesn't last long. It might last it for ages in your own head. But that freeze response happens so quickly to others that are seeing you. In your own head, it lasts for ages. You're trying to decide, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Now, it might happen really quickly. I might get argumentative. What do you mean what's wrong with my haircut? What are you on about? Who do you think you are? Or I might go the other way. Oh, my God. Um... Uh, it's bad. Uh, 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 so I, I need to go. I, I forgot. I need to speak to Mr. Walls about something. Um, uh, oh, my dad's phone. Uh, I need to go home. I, I really feel unwell. All those different things. So that's just a very off the top of my head example. But that's how simple it could be. That's how easy and quick it could be to set off the fight or flight response. If you've had a bad build up of things, if it's one thing and another thing and another thing and another thing and just like a volcano it's bubbling away the lava's got to the top and then boom you will either fight or you will flight but that's the fight or flight response it also releases a chemical that we call adrenaline that adrenaline rushes through your body and what it does it's designing your body to adapt to the changes it needs to get away so be, be, be able to basically gain some super speed. Some folks who are not the best at running, when they have this fight or flight moment, suddenly talk about, I don't know how I did it, but I managed to like run like faster than I've ever run before and keep running. Like I've never been able to do that before because I'm crap at running. That's the adrenaline. It very cleverly puts more energy into the parts of the body that it knows it's going to need to escape this threat. If you're going to go into the fight mode, if you're not the strongest person and you don't know how to fight very well, suddenly you people have reported that they become super strong. Or not super strong, become stronger. Stronger than they actually realise they are. That's the fight response. And that would have been designed to stop things from attacking you. And by things we're talking about, like, Back in the day, a saber-toothed tigers and stuff like that to try and survive. That's what that is. That fight or flight response is a survival mechanism. And animals have it. You see it with the nature shows where the tiger's trying to, or the cheetah's trying to chase the gazelle and the gazelle does a sprinter and quite oh, sometimes the gazelle makes it because its adrenaline's pumping and it's pumping more energy into the right muscles and it manages to get away. It doesn't always get away, but sometimes it does. In insects, it's there as well. How many times have we tried to deal with a spider in the house? Some people try to kill it. Some people just try to pick it up and get it out of the house. The spider will do one of two things. I don't know if you've noticed that, but the spider will either notice you and then when it sees you coming towards it, it sprints. It's like, oh my God, and it tries to crawl away really fast. Or it somehow very scarily does it run at you and your first response is to go, oh my God, I don't know what it's doing. Why is it running at me? So it, we all have it. It's a very prehistoric thing. Only thing is, with us being human, we have a wee bit of more thinking power. When that adrenaline is pumping through your body, when you've got that fight or flight response going, it is very difficult to get some logical, rational thinking back. And that's where it becomes a problem. So if you've had a bad night, things are going on at home, you and your mates have fallen out earlier that day, and you come to school the next day, and it turns out you've got a test, or you've done your homework, and you get yourself worked up, 
when the teacher says, and Neil, where is your homework today? Remember, you were meant to have it in today. That could be enough to set you off. When it's happening, you might not be able to stop it. Or you might feel like you can't stop it. The thinking process is so fast, you'll feel like it's a whirlwind, a storm in your head. And then you'll feel like your body is doing something strange because it's preparing to get away. And you don't know how to stop it. That is where the issue lies. Check out my other videos. This video was just about fight or flight. It was just to give you a little bit of background information, which I would give you in one-to-ones. But with the way lockdown is at the moment, can't give you that. So, designed this to hopefully give you a wee bit more information. If you've got any questions, catch me on the Twitter. Or email me on my Glow account for the Brave You Pupils. You will be able to find me that way. Um, I will be putting up some more videos around quick relaxation techniques, some coping strategies little hints and tips and tricks. There's also going to be a, a couple of t two slightly longer relaxation tracks that you'll be able to get as well. Anyway, peeps, thank you very much. Stay safe. Keep cool.